Was building on the lecture Versus coming daily under pressure Working on the plot and the scheme The true style trademark is at the edge of your dreams I'm talking one One shot for the kill The breeze cut freeze up Straight drop in the chills I'm talking Taking over pieces and shares A ball with sky high Check the movement is here Yeah Yeah It's one heart, one shot Now the future is yours Go You got Matt Hansen about 12 minutes back. 12 minutes back. Oh, he rode well, man. He did better than I thought. <laughs> You've been a new dad for what, two weeks? Yeah, that's why I wasn't 100% sure whether or not I'd go, I'd be racing. Because the training had been going really well and I was hitting some good numbers and stuff. I thought I'll put an entry in and obviously we were having uh, our first child that was going to be born, just depending on how like we're coping. Because we didn't really know it was our first one. So it was a step into the unknown. Um, and it's been going well, like, to be fair, like, Laura's done the lion's share of the work, like, so, <laughs> if I don't get a good result, she'll be like, I can't believe you went out there for nothing. <laughs> Texas, you've raced here before. Um, Matt's had the better hand of you when you've raced yeah, here Yeah, he has, yeah. 2015, he, uh, I, I still remember that. Um, I was absolutely killing myself to try and hang on to it because that was my first big breakthrough result, and up until then, I hadn't really had a performance. When he actually caught me, I was actually relieved in a way because I was absolutely dying trying to hold on to it. That was in so much pain, but really nice one, like my best result. And that was a really great memory. And that kind of started like my main pro career. If you went on the top step, don't bother wasting your fucking time counting. No one will remember it. <laughs> Miracles are possible. Anything is possible. And we're in Texas. to do to win the race is a miracle right now so I mean it's no secret I put it out there on YouTube that I had two pretty major surgeries um, in uh, January and I have no idea what that run is gonna be but I mean I plan to have a really good swim bike you know you said Lauren led from the front for a bit last year I caught her on the bike question is just how quickly can you know can I catch her and am I gonna have company with me or not and I, I have no idea. I mean, there's so many scenarios that have played out in my mind, you know, like I get out of the water, you know, a couple minutes behind Lauren by myself, or I get out of the water with a group of about, you know, three or four of us. Um, whatever it is, I'll make it work to my advantage and have fun doing it. So, and then when I get out on the run, it's just, you know, that's where you, your heart kicks in. <laughs> I'm honestly just blessed and happy to be here on the start line and I had someone say to me you know being on the start line is like a finish line for you for this race and I really think that's true who's your biggest threat uh me <laughs> Now tell us about your first win and your last win here at Texas. First win was uh, 2015 on the old course, uh, beautiful course. Yeah, I came off the bike well down from Joe. Joe rode really hard. I was able to get the lead around mile 18 um, right at the end of the second lap and then and then hold on for the end. And then, uh, then I won it in 17 and 18. Uh, 18 was a uh, fast year. The conditions were absolutely perfect. Couldn't have scripted a better day overall. I got off the bike with a lot of guys who could run really fast. And so it just, I had to go out hard and try to get a little bit of a gap. I didn't. Uh, I ended up running with somebody in my back pocket through about 25 and a half miles and finally snapped the rubber band there right before the finish line. I mean, we've talked about Joe a lot. He's he's definitely solid in all all three. Definitely uh, bike run heavy. Um, so yeah, it's just uh, pay attention to what everybody else is doing. I mean, obviously he's one that that is uh, on the line that's got the better of me a few times. But you know, there's a bunch of other guys here that uh, you know are definitely capable of taking the win. I have a sliding scale of what looks like failure. And to me, failure is not getting my Kona slot. Yeah, 
Yeah, honestly, with Oceanside, I just wasn't sure about myself generally and just about the whole situation. How coming out of Oceanside, it's given me an incredible amount of confidence to come here and like, oh yeah, I, what feels like back to a sort of mentality of like, I'm here to win the race. And I think that my performance at Oceanside gave me the confidence in my performance that I can do it. I just need to execute on the day. Last time you here was kind of a bit of a tragic moment. How does that affect race week at all? Or Yeah, it's been a funny few hours landing. I wasn't expecting it to hit me and it, it hit me that I just suddenly felt really sad and a bit scared, I guess. I'm not sure. I haven't w worried about processing that emotion. Um, and then getting in the car, driving to our homestay, Raoul, um, it was all happy memories. I think it will be fine. Safe to say you back yourself on this run course? Yeah. It, I, I've run most of this run course before. I might take the lead with 1K to go, or I might take the lead on the first K of the run. I hope that I'll be able to enjoy the race to the point where I'm riding in the vicinity of Jocelyn. But that would be optimistic, I think. Hey dudes, we ready to roll? All right, Cody, let's see your best Texas two-step on the way out the door. Texas two-step? I don't even know that one. That's not this one, right? That's not Texas two-step? That's close. Okay. Oh. It's like my 10th time in the woodlands, so I feel a lot more relaxed than typical three days out from an Ironman. Do you think Joe's gonna make a move on the bike and leave everyone, or do you think he can hang with Joe on the bike? Joe's gonna try and make a move on the bike and leave everyone. And you know, Matt's showing he can ride at that level, and same with Rudy and a couple other guys. I would love for it to come down to a running race. My goal is for eight of us to come off the bike to get together and then run like sub 240 marathons. Let's just say, hypothetically, you had to choose one person to get into to the octagon with between Joe Skipper, Matt Hansen, Rudy Von Berg. <laughs> Who would you rather go up against? Oh, you're gonna make me pick? I'm gonna go with Matt Hansen. Why? So, we started our careers off around the same time, training together. We did a few training to cam camps here together under the same coach, right in the woodlands. Like I'm talking seven to 10 years ago. So we kind of grew up in the sport racing each other. He's had a more prestigious Ironman career than me, but I want to show him that I'm not just his little bro. That run pedigree is frightening for a lot of people. <laughs> Two thousand sixteen runner up. Yep, and twenty eighteen too. And two thousand seventeen winner. Yep. Uh, I mean, you perform well here. Like, what's it going to take to get on that podium this weekend? Oh man, well, it's a super. It's a competitive field out there. So, uh, just being consistent, I think, across the board for all three, and uh, giving my best for sure. You have become like the elusive triathlete on social media. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. What have you been up to? I work full time as a band teacher for elementary kids so uh yeah that's kind of like my day gig and then i do this at night but yeah i don't really have time for the social media stuff and uh, i have a lot of connections locally and that's been really rewarding for me like in the triathlon world um i like coach locally with our lightning warriors team and the connections with the local community and so social media hasn't really just been on my radar <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I did run before I came to triathlon and then found this when I got injured running all the time. Every runner's story, right? I came to triathlon, so. Who are you most excited to race against this weekend? I mean, I've never raced Kat Matthews, so definitely excited to race her. I mean, it's always fun to race against Jocelyn and Jen and Ed. It's fun to have some faces you're familiar with out there, too. Joe said he's going to drop you early on the bike. Not if he, uh... It's already five minutes back after the swim. Rudy, what number Ironman is this for you? Full distance. Number four. Three mm -hmm. last year. Last year was my first year of folds. I mean, it's never fully figured out. I'm not too scared of the distance. Even though the end of the marathon is always Definitely tough moment. Do you have the fitness to win this race? Uh, I think so. I think I'm uh, ready to be up there at least. As I said, goal, goal is the podium or better. But what would winning this race mean to you? 
Oh, it'd be pretty epic, actually. I feel like it would be kind of announcing my return to the highest level and positioning myself really well for Nice. Because if I win here against guys like Skipper and Hanson, then on a course that suits me better in Nice, that could definitely be a very strong factor. I for sure have a fighting chance here. I raced in Oceanside to get run race done <laughs> before the big one here. Full distance is where I feel I perform my best. I feel like I can compete. Yeah, I came straight from Oceanside and has really like fallen straight into the rhythm here. I feel like the run course is the coolest part of this race, to be honest, and running is my strongest discipline. It's definitely what I feel like will be good for me. I feel like the triathlon community is just huge here. You feel so welcome, a lot of homestay families and nice places to go and people always are very welcoming you and also like giving you advice of where to go, how to do everything and yeah, find your way around, make you feel welcome. You were a pro golfer at one point, is that correct? Yeah, I played golf international, but always on amateur level, but with wildcard to play on the European Tour. Being a golfer has made me the person I am today. I have carried on a lot of stuff that I don't think about on an everyday basis, but is still in there somewhere. And just stuff like being patient and like enjoying the process of a long journey and being dedicated, I guess.
Jordan, walk me through your day, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, surreal day for me. Um, aiming for the podium. Thought the win was possible, but uh, yeah, definitely it kind of felt maybe a tiny bit like a stretch. But I believed in it all day, even though we're a few miles to go. I definitely thought I was going to finish uh, third. But uh, yeah, solid swim. It was the four of us up front. Then uh, I felt good on the bike. I was trying to, you know, keep the pace going, thinking about Matt Hansen and Joe Skipper behind. And I wasn't getting much help on the bike. So uh, I was trying to get the guys to go. Come on, baby! No, no help. So kind of did a bit of an attack to Mr. not ride for these guys the whole way. He's finishing up his day. Got away, but barely, really. Well, right right there off the bike. And uh, then uh, my best marathon of my best bike. So uh, kind of a perfect day for me. And uh, yeah, crazy uh, last few miles. With all three of us within what, 20, uh, 20 seconds or something. That was crazy. I had, had good energy at the end. And even though my legs were completely done and I was able to rally for the win. And for a moment there, like it seemed like you might have might have gotten away from you, but you always had it in your sights. What did it take to dig deep to come across to finish my first today? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was kind of a, a bit of a dream if, to win here, you know? So, uh, you know, the whole time at the end there, you're just telling yourself, wow, if I can pull this off, that'd be so awesome. So, you know, I just really gave everything. And uh, thankfully, the nutrition was way better this time. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty stoked, and uh, hearing a lot of the the spectators screaming my name was uh, give me that that extra energy as well. It was a tough day out there. Uh, once again, it's a sprinter's race on Ironman. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> um, I was I, I'm a former swimmer, and I was a sprinter back then. Seriously, I forgot how to do it because I lost the finish, so I was uh, that was hard. And yeah, I was a little bit dehydrated. I was cramping a little bit because I lost too many bottles on the bike. And um, I, I thought we were going to work a little bit more with Rudy, but I was unable to stay with him on the second lap. Uh, yeah, I was feeling pretty bad uh, at this point, but somehow I recovered from that, got on the run, felt pretty good. Uh, maybe launch my attack on the last lap a little bit early because I was like cramping like the last few miles again and the last straight was like awful I mean my legs would be hurting like maybe a week uh, more but yeah, yeah pretty nice experience I love Woodlands so yeah that's great yeah I qualified for Nice uh yeah that was my goal of course I wanted to win but that's a sport to win. I, I did all my best and uh, that was a great race. And congrats to guys, especially for Rudy. Uh, he deserved this win, so yeah. Yeah, I, I love the atmosphere here. The city is beautiful. Uh, maybe in the future I'll move in here. So yeah, yeah definitely recommend it. All right, Matthew, first pro raid. First pro raid. Walk me through your day. So I really just came into this race wanting to have fun and try and execute to the best of my abilities, make no stupid mistakes, don't get too caught up in the pro dynamics because obviously racing is very different than doing a solo time trial which is what I experienced as an age grouper so my goal was to be in the first pack on the swim first pack on the bike and then you know just see whatever I have left on the run and for the most part I was able to do that so I was very happy kind of with the execution overall I felt like I hit my fueling really well hit my hydration really well so just very happy with the race overall and uh, it was great to be here in Texas. Like I love the energy and everyone out on the course really helps you like dig deep on that last lap in particular. So um, just had a great time and uh, you know, we had a great fight at the end. I wish I could have put in a little bit more, but you know, something to work for for next time. The pro dynamic, I could just feel that it was a little more serious than even I was and so I was like I want to flip the script and like have as much fun out there as I can and I know that when you're having fun the pain's a little less bad um, so I really just wanted to have as much fun as possible and also I knew that if I was having fun at the beginning of the marathon it was a good indication that I wasn't pushing too hard 
which is one of my big goals is just to kind of, you know, he had a good pace for the first two laps and see whatever I had left for the last one. So I had a good swim start the first 10 meters maybe, and then I didn't have a good swim. I, I just lost it. I lost my head. I lost the position. Yeah, bad swim, but it was maybe three minutes down. And then again, I thought I could sort of pull back on the bike, but I didn't have the legs. I'm going to put that down to head and legs. Um, yeah, not a great day until I get out on the run. And I knew that I'd sort of been banking these tokens of effort that if I hadn't been able to put them down on the bike, I was going to had to use them on the run. So I actually remember um, in the fighting chance video before the race, I said I backed myself in the run. And I remember thinking, well, I've got to, I've, there is no way I can't win the run now. Um, having been so arrogant about it at the start of the race. Um, the course isn't flat. I didn't think it was flat, but it, it was actually quite nice. It was like rolling, there were some hills, but I yeah, naively thought it would be fine and I just haven't done the training. Um, I think it's, I, my coach will disagree before the race because he'll want to give me the confidence, but we both know that I've you know not done the training for this distance. So I'm really looking forward now to a proper training block to hopefully make the next Ironman not feel as bad. I earned my Kona slot last year. It doesn't feel as special as it should because I, in my head, I still earned, I earned it last year. But to know that that is my now my focus for the next six months, yeah, it feels great. I love the community here. I think the the triathlon community, the, the active lifestyle, the the lifestyle generally, I think it's amazing. And the way that they bring everyone together on the run course is excellent. <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, we had to catch Lauren, right? And then, yeah, obviously try to, to keep Kat away. You know that like, she's always coming for you. So it's just a matter of see how big a gap we could make. I had a very good rhythm in the beginning yeah, on the run and I think Jocelyn kind of... Uh, like, she's just, just getting back to running and I think that she was happy just to settle in a bit. Uh, so that gave me a huge gap from the beginning. I definitely took my chance here uh, and I'm so happy that I like finally put a race together. Good swim for me, super strong bike. We had so much fun on the bike, yeah, Justin and I. Then I just took my chance and ran as fast as I could for as long as I could. Kona is the big thing and it's so nice to have that settled. Uh, yeah, now we can have fun all summer. This race is just amazing. There's so much support out there. You can just feel that the whole Woodlands, Texas community is just all in for this. They love this race and it just gives me so much energy. I just try to soak everything in, build up to when I knew that I would start to need it. Amazingly in impressed with myself. Like I, I love blowing myself away and I definitely did and, and um, just really cherished and enjoyed every moment. My husband, I think the last mile or two, he said, remember what you did uh, to get here and remember what this means. So I, I did, I had a lot of fun um, swim bike and the run, I, I haven't been running much. I've run for a little over three weeks now. So it was a little, um, when I reached, uh, no, 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 I did one um, 10 mile run before this race. And that was my longest run. Other than that, it was like six miles that I've been doing. One 10 mile run. And so it's just like, when I got to that spot of 10 miles out on uh, Lake Woodlands, I was just like, oh my gosh, here we go. This is unknown territory for six months, six months. And so I was just blown away. Like, I was like, when are my legs going to give out? When are they going to give out? <laughs> but they didn't. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. I have always said this run course is my favorite run course because like just everywhere, it's so many cheers. And I've done this course so many times. I've come to the Woodlands and trained so much that I feel like I'm part of this community. I, I was just looking at a, a swim coach that I swim with over here. So I, I just, I, you know, every other person I feel like I know and I have a memory with here. So it's just so much fun.